Hello and welcome to Linux Lads, episode 106. As usual, I'm Shane and I'm joined by Mike, Connor and Amalith. Full house again this week. Woo! Thanks for um, indulging our little uh, break from schedule programming last time, uh, where me and Mike talked about all the things we like. So this week, we're going to be talking about, I know it's a bit out of date, but we're going to be talking about Reddit and what happened with all of that. Uh, we really wanted to talk about it last time, but of course, there was only two of us, so. I'll give a summary uh, for people who are completely under a rock uh, or may not be fully aware of what's going on. So the whole deal with Reddit is Reddit has been trying to IPO for a very long time. And in order to IPO, their books have to look very good. And I've heard that they're not profitable or nowhere near uh, yeah, anything like that. So their whole thing and they're suggesting that third party apps that are using their API are profitable because they have ads and, and so on. So they're trying to have a conversation about revenue sharing and as well as that, so there's that dynamic to the relationship with the, the third party developer. Also, they're saying that AI things like Chappie G- GPT and the Google equivalent that nobody can freaking remember the name of are basically scraping Reddit as part of its language models and that's bumping up their server costs and so on. So on light of that, they, as of today, which is the 1st of uh, July, they have enacted a policy. They gave people loads of notice. They gave them, them like a month's, uh, a month's notice, but I think as of today, their API costs have shot through the roof and then the third-party developers said, this is going to cost us like millions per year in terms of if we want to keep using it. Apollo, which I think is iOS only, have effectively said, in order for us to continue the way we've been running it up until now, it would cost about 30 million per year, for, which is <laughs> understandably completely unsus- unsustainable. The cynical aspect of that is that they're using the AI model as um, scraping as an excuse, and they effectively want to kill third-party apps without actually formally making a policy about killing third-party apps. So they're, or it could be a bit of both. Maybe they have, they both. Maybe they have both motivations in, at hand. It was also the CEO's response to it. Yeah, yeah. His his response to the, the criticisms has been absolutely horrible and mm. woeful. Um, there's the protests. There's been protests going on where many of the very popular like. Uh, or slash picks or slash um, a few other ones that I can't think of off the top of my head. Some of the really popular, like or slash gaming, those kind of really, really popular subreddits made it private. And now effectively they're saying, okay, in order, uh, you're, you guys are going to have to make them public again. And they're refusing. And then they said, okay, we're going to just replace you as, as moderators. So then you can, we're going to force those particular subreddits to become public again by replacing you and yeah their their response to it has been fairly toxic it's it's not the best so i have a question as a uh, reddit mostly um, like mm. not even a newbie but somebody is not very interested if you make a community on reddit right uh who does it belong to who's responsible is it to people who are responsible for the content the people who publish the content or still reddit the company like communities, every community belong to people. Like in our world, in our open source world, we are used to the fact that the communities belong to the people who create them, right? So if, you know, the Linux, Linux Lights community is us for and whoever, whoever decides to talk to us on Telegram or any other means, right? That's, that's the Linux Lights community. If we, if we made the same on Reddit, uh, would it be, would it belong to us or would it belong to the company? Not legally, but more like philosophically. The expectation historically has been that it would belong to us. But with all this mess that's happening right now, Reddit is showing that they believe they are the ones who control communities and they're enforcing that control. They are ousting mods who have decided to continue the protest and keep their subreddit private. They are forcing some subreddits that were private to be public again. So, so they are basically they just created my opinion that they are that Reddit the company is a bit stupid, really, because if your business is communities, you you cannot kill off because you, you're gonna destroy a community if you 
remove the people who make it. You cannot make mm -hmm. community with your employees only. So yeah, that's probably all I needed to know about this thing. And also the 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 it's a labor it's a labor of love for a lot of the moderators. They're essentially yep. I mean, they're essentially getting free labor. Reddit is one of the most popular websites on the entire internet. And that's it's not even close. I've heard a lot of people say that Google search is now measurably less useful that so many subreddits are private. Yeah, I've I've heard that too. But what I was I was going to say is so you have one of the most popular websites on the internet combined with pretty much free labor and you cannot turn that into a sustainable business model. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of dumb. Yeah. Yep. And they tried that whole thing of like Reddit gold and everything and uh like having their own little like internal like Reddit books kind of thing. Um I didn't really understand all of that or what it was for, but like yeah, they tried all that stuff. Yeah, I th obviously I think they could have handled this very very differently. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone's doubting that. Um uh, as a as a brief aside before we get it, into uh the they keep pushing the first party mobile app which sucks so badly. One of the reasons why th there's so much protest about the the third party apps. The third party apps are way better. They're better designed, um, are faster. They they don't kind of crash as much. They're like less buggy. They have better moderation tooling that simply does not exist on the Reddit website or in the Reddit mobile app. So again, they are refusing free things that they were given by people who really like to be able to express themselves on their platform. Yeah, en enthusiastic people about the, about like as I said, labor of love, enthusiastic people. They're pissing off. Even even companies that make money, right? Small, I assume small developers, small time developers who make money from third party apps, right? Even that, this is something that that Google and Apple know very well, and at least they realized it very in the beginning. If you have a platform and you make other people make money off your platform and just charge them, uh, you know, you, that's how you make money. I don't. So basically, what I don't understand is the Reddit, or is it just that somebody there has got a idea about about control growth and uh the kind of yeah, we need to we need to be able to to make projections about how we are going to infinitely grow so that people are going so that people buy our stock when we do an ipo if that's the kind of thing that's super sad exactly yeah essentially i, th I think it com comes in with something with a very simplistic view of so how you um be look like make your books look very good for an IPO is these are the like a 10 minute presentation with bullet points like this is what you have to do step one you do this step two you do this step two. and it's like a copy and paste approach this is what you do in order to make your company look attractive for an IPO not realizing what is unique about Reddit and which is its community yeah it was uh it was like nobody was denying like i i had I have a developer friend and he 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 at the start he was kind of on reddit side um because he thought that the moderators were sort of throwing their rattles out of the pram a little bit and he said they weren't making a huge dent because it was like less than five percent of subreddits that actually did this but i think it was the subreddits that did it there were quite big ones um but he said that like their protest wasn't really helping it was actually like impacting users rather than reddit because people were still going to use it at the end of the day um but uh and he said like there, wa there wasn't any mass migration away from it to be honest um but he said that like you know you can't get a free lunch forever i mean a you know api requests cost money uh, to to the company in some way um his he did accept though that yeah the api pricing was quite scandalous yeah. it was quite high um but yeah i don't know it's it's a complex issue and yeah like you said connor it's like Reddit is a unique sort of platform and it has a lot of dedicated people who 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 kind of have built built communities there. It's like it's quite important to a lot of people. So um yeah, it was just kind of a slap in the face to some people and it was just handled very poorly, I think. And yeah, with the the whole IPO thing, it, yeah, it's just kind of stupid that we keep going down this road of like tech companies are like, "Oh, we're not making enough money or we need to appease shareholders, blah, blah, blah. Let's make everything shitter. I think there are so many better ways they could have gone about this mm. than pricing third parties out completely. They could have done like 
more reasonable pricing for developers or for for third-party apps, giving them lower API prices, maybe grandfathered them into a cheaper tier or something. I don't know. But they could have also done something like many Fediverse platforms. Each user gets an individual API key that has like severe limits on how how many posts they can view, how many requests they can make, and that user enters their API key in the application. So there are per user request limits, not one API key for the entire application that's distributed to millions of people. That way, if someone is like an individual is moderating a hundred subreddits, then they're obviously an extremely heavy Reddit user. Maybe they start bumping up against those limits. Maybe they have to pay, but the regular people like me, I don't think I should have to pay to look at Reddit with all the sponsored crap that shows up in the feed. That, that's that's true. Um, well, the, then it's a, a problem of implementation because yeah, I, I can get where they're going with the redesign of oh, so Reddit new interface versus Reddit old interface and the uh, official Reddit app very much being of, in that vein is they're going after a completely different demographic. I understand that, and I'm not necessarily saying that that is a bad thing. They have to evolve with the times, they have to everything. The Reddit application and the new Reddit interface reminds me of like Instagram and those kind of platforms, which I get it, they're trying to target a different demographic, which is perfectly okay, as long as you should have at least have alternatives. Mm. I specifically go to old.reddit.com and I use the Reddit enhancement speech because that is how I've always interacted with Reddit. As long as that is preserved, then I'll probably keep using it to some extent. I do not like the the toxic way that they've responded to the community. And in that vein, I am also checking out the, some of the alternatives that we're, we'll probably get into. But for me, what the community is what makes the platform. Sure, I go on there because people post news and people post links, people post content. But sometimes you go in there and in the in the chat, like it has its own internal references, it has its own referential nature to it. In the comments, sometimes you'll see, and people will just randomly start typing in song lyrics, <laughs> like to a, pop, <laughs> a popular pop song. Like somebody will type in the first line, the immediate reply into that is the next line, then the next line, next, then the next line. And to me, there's there's like a wholesomeness to that kind of interactions that they have, that or kind of dry, sarcastic jokes are in the in the uh, are in the comments sometimes as well. And that is yeah. one of the reasons why I keep going back is not the necessarily the content that is posted, but the interaction amongst the users. Yeah, I find um, it's it's a classic case of a, a, another tech platform wanting to kind of be everything to everyone um, and trying to just do it the standard way of doing it. Uh, you know, IPO, growth, blah, blah, blah. We've all been there. We all know what I'm going to say. But uh, just to segue onto the next a uh, few points. The alternatives uh, have gotten a good bit of press over this, like Cabin and Lemmy and stuff like that. So I'm kind of happy with that because I'm perfectly happy for people to move towards the Fediverse because I really enjoy using it. Heavy Mastodon user, and it's all I use. Um, and it's just, it's just, I, I just, I don't see a problem with everyone just having their own little corner of the internet. We don't all have to be on big, massive monolithic platforms. You know, I don't mind just uh, the, the internet segmenting a little bit. Up until today, the only client, the only way I interacted with Reddit at all was through the third-party app called Sync, and there was an update to the app yesterday, early this morning, I don't remember exactly which, and when I opened it after midnight last night, um, a little notice popped up saying, basically, Sync for Reddit is dead, long live Sync for Lemmy, which is kind of interesting. So I'm interested to see how the new sync app works with lemmy instances yeah because you're going to take those uh those apps that people have poured their heart and soul into and they have good ux and and all that kind kind of thing and you're going to take all that good stuff and bring it over to the fediverse so i don't see that i see that as a great thing can we circle back and reverse or whatnot a little bit what (laughs) is then lemmy and what is cabin 
Lemmy and Kbin are both basically Reddit clones, but they use ActivityPub, so they uh, Lemmy instances can federate with both Kbin instances as well as Mastodon, Akoma, Miski, and and all of those. Sorry, so does it mean that I don't have to have a Lemmy account, don't have to do anything? I just need to follow. Can I like follow from my Mastodon app? Can I follow topics on Lemmy, like? I can get. I have a bit of experience of this, so um, I put out a post on on my Mastodon saying, "Hey guys, like, uh, what's this whole thing with Kbin and Lemmy?" And like, I asked, tagged, and Lemmy instance. I think it was um, Lemmy ML, and then people started replying to it, and I noticed that they were like their username at Lemmy, so they were replying from Lemmy. I was like. I got the concept of that this was possible in using ActivityPub, but seeing it in practice in real life blew my mind. I mean, they literally were replying to it going, yeah, like it's interoperable. We can message each other. This is like it appeared on my feed. So to answer Mike's question, you can do it that way, but it is essentially what is your preferred interface? So if you like the Reddit style interface, then you sign up for an, a Kbin or Lemmy instance. You can also interact with uh, a Mastodon user because of the uh, activity pub nature of it. And you can also interact with. So those are two completely different platforms, but they, because they're both on activity pub, they can interact with each other. I, as an experiment, I tried to bring up a Lemmy community within Kbin. And it worked. I was able to see the content of it. This was on an unsigned in just browser session. So if I had signed in, I could have interacted with those people. But it's essentially the interface that you prefer. Mastodon kind of has the Twitter-like interface. But if you prefer a different interface, then you just sign up for that instance and you can interact with users on Mastodon using your Lemmy account. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. Like, it, it, if you think about it, that's like putting a comment on a Facebook post and someone on Twitter being able to see it and reply to it. Like, yeah. that, that's actually kind of crazy if you think about it. Do we want to bring politics into this at all? Always. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard a lot of people. This is all hearsay. I rumor. I guess I. Maybe we should not include this. I don't know. It, up to you guys. Uh, I've heard that the some of the core Lemmy developers are pretty extreme tankies. Do you know what that term is? No, I don't. No. Tanky is somebody who thinks that violence is acceptable in terms of class struggle. So he would say Stalin had a good idea. Oh. Uh, it's, yeah, depending where you are. Like, but that, to me, is quite unpalatable. Now, Everybody has ideas and everybody has opinions. Do we do we discard a tech because of who wrote it? I don't think so. I think it's just something uh, to keep I, I, in I mind so when either. interacting with the people behind the project. And that's one thing. And then if this is the core developers, they obviously run their own instance. So that would be mm. the one where everybody signs up by default, mm-hmm. right? So you get, I assume what's going to happen if you sign up at the main Lemmy instance you're going to get a lot of, especially for at first when you have no other, you not belong to anything else, you get the default feed, you might get a lot of, uh, well, communist propaganda, like, basically, <laughs> which, which might feel refreshing, given that you're probably coming from uh, Nazi-infested Reddit, but it probably gets very old very fast. <laughs> yeah, it's like, which, which radical do you want? Probably the same advice that Amadeus gave when we were discussing Macedon, but obviously to a more extreme level. So um, when we were discussing Macedon, Amalus, you said avoid uh, the main one, which is Macedon.social, but probably for an, a more extreme version of that, probably advice is to seek out one of the smaller instances. And I came across, um, they seem to be a lot of the the Fediverse applications are now of of like of late, especially the ones that resemble Reddit. Um, in light of this whole Reddit thing, they seem to be cross posting amongst themselves this one um post, which seems to be very useful. And then they're like, these are the all of the instances of Lemmy and what they allow, whether they allow 
not safe for work, what whether allowed different things and that there, there's a breakdown and also how many active users are on it and also where it's hosted. If you prefer like one that is posted in EU or something, it's like it's the web, the country where it's hosted is listed as well. And you should also keep in mind that even if you sign up on one instance, you can still follow communities and interact with people on a completely other instance, as long as they federate with each other. That that that's good. So, like, yeah, okay. The political stuff is one thing, and uh, hopefully there will be there will be a way forward. Like when you when you can still use the tech and not be exposed to whatever it is you don't want to be exposed to. Second thing, how are these technologies like mature and well done? I heard, and this is from my Mastodon feed. I never I've I've never tried it myself, but I've heard in my Mastodon field like two criticisms for 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 the for these two technologies right so one is that lemme is very politically charged or the people behind it are very politically charged in a certain way and the other one was that kbin is not mature enough as a technology to uh support the communities obviously not on a scale of ready but like almost at all that it's not as good i have not tried to set up kbin yet i might look at that sometime this weekend I did look at running Lemmy. The primary officially supported deployment method is, of course, Docker, Docker Compose, all that stuff. And and there is an Ansible role you can point at a server somewhere, but that also just does a Docker setup. They do have instructions for quote-unquote manually installing it, but I, I went through that. It was a pain in the ass. I gave up after a couple of hours. <laughs> And and I'm only interested in running a private Lemmy or Kbin instance. I don't want to run a public instance at all. Yeah, that's far too much responsibility. Yes, especially for... How do I word this? There are a lot of questionable subreddits, <laughs> and there would be a lot of questionable communities on Lemmy or Kbin, and I don't want to have to actively watch for, for example, underage content federating to my server. And then the FBI busts down my door because I missed one image. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's way too much. We're, we're, we're dancing around the topic, but yes, that's... Yeah. CSAM is the acronym. I want to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah, it's a minefield. Uh. I don't blame you. So is this headed towards the fact that, yeah, we will have federated platforms and everybody will choose their own bubble and in fact, what I think it should have in the first place is that we will all only talk to official sources or people we know from real life or people that got introduced to us through through a community we are already in, like you know, like us for, rather than talking to strangers on the internet because that just seems not to be ending well for anybody. That's the great thing about Mastodon that I love is that it's a pure network effect. So it's people that I've physically met uh, at, at conferences um, or I know through this podcast or people I, I know in real life and then I see them boosting other people's posts and then I'm like, okay, great, that person's okay. You know, it's just like an organic discovery of, of cool people and cool stuff. And then you can follow like, you can follow hashtags. I'm using uh, Megalodon for Mastodon and I can follow hashtags in that when it supports it. So, uh, can create lists of people who post about certain topics and just see that that timeline so y- you have so many options and you can tailor it in any way you like it's really great like I, i'm just i'm a total cheerleader for for the fediverse i and i agree like I, I don't care about a marketplace of ideas or a town square for the internet i just don't give a shit like i, I just want to use this stuff to talk to people that i i like um and who i find interesting i could see myself using Kbin or or Lemmy, uh, how I would see myself switching over or using it more than Reddit would be not necessarily tech content communities. So I like on Reddit that there's awe, which is just cute baby animal photos. Sometimes you just need that at the end of the day of just going in there and going, oh, look at that puppy. Um, <laughs> and also, I, I think I mentioned to the guys as well, I mean, I like Ropey, and there's a Ropey subreddit called r slash Union, 
and sure it's full of absolute banter and memes and everything and it has its own culture but there's also the whole like the if there's a a rugby match that has is happening there's like here's the match thread on well the match is going on and like there's banter and there's freaking comments back and forth going oh, your team is shit and all of that banter but in like online form any time that I've looked on Emmy Lemmy or uh, sure it's at the moment is not quite mature enough for this but any time that I've looked on Lemmy or anything like that there doesn't seem to be an equivalent of it on there as soon as there is I could see myself switching over yeah w- without a doubt I I thought about what you said because you said this similar uh, something similar like, uh, you said this basically in our chat you basically said well where are the people who are not technical going to go how are they going to form communities on Lemmy or Cabin and I think there's four possible ways this go go one is they learn and research Lemmy or Cabin and go there which might happen might not depending on how dedicated the main organizers are for each of the communities and how much pull they might exercise on their community and what the rest of their communities are. Or uh, they just stay on Reddit and accept the fact that uh, it's just gotten worse, but this is still the easiest way they can talk about the things that actually matter to them, which I think is going to happen for many of those. Mm -hmm. Or they find somebody and that somebody can be for a smaller community like somebody the organizers trust or they can find a provider who will uh set it up for them like a company that's that's for a smaller fee small fee will basically say okay yeah you can come over here and here is your entire community uh with your logos and uh you know packaged up and here are your uh, admin access and, and and all that and i said there were four points and there were actually only three so yeah. uh I think I think basically you have or no four four option fourth option was like they will just not do anything and it will all die which probably is not going to happen hopefully so I think the the communities have got the choice of doing it themselves or finding somebody they can trust and doing it for them or staying on Reddit and by doing it I mean going uh, to the Fediverse with their community I I could see myself using the Fediverse more as particularly in relation to this and um, some communities i do not see moving over i think they will just stay on reddit to be perfectly honest i probably don't use reddit on mobile that often i tend to be i tend to interact with reddit in the evenings when i'm on my pc and uh it's old reddit with the reddit enhancement suite and you can take that from my cold dead hands (laughs) so as long as that functionality still works i that is my preferred way of interacting with reddit and because it's old school, they doesn't have any of their modern bullshit. There's no inserted ads. Uh, there's no any of the the modern bullshit. Um, like, I hate that too. Yeah, that's what I love about the Fediverse. It doesn't do any of that. Like, it's it's there if you want to use it, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't fight for your attention or try to try to trick you into using it or any of that shit or bother you in any way. Yeah, I just I I I don't like big tech anymore. I <laughs> if everything can be on the Fediverse, I'm perfectly okay with that. Well, big tech is coming to the Fediverse. Meta is building Threads, which is a federated Twitter clone. Oh yeah. Didn't they get together with uh, some of the people who run the Mastodon instances and there was a meeting that, that nobody talks about or some some bullshit like that? Meta had an NDA meeting with some of the admins of the biggest Mastodon instances. And from what I've heard, this is all hearsay, but from what I've heard, Meta is going to allow List federate with very particular independent Mastodon instances. And the ones it chooses to federate with will be monetarily compensated as in Meta is going to pay those instances to federate with them. And then they'll have some sort of procedure where smaller instances can apply to federate with threads. And if they're accepted, they won't be compensated. It'll just be the bigger ones that Meta has an agreement with or something. Don't know whether that's the case. This is all hearsay again. What's in it? What's in it for, for Meta? Yeah. I've I've mixed feelings in relation to that. One is that hey, it's the Fediverse; you can do what it what you want. It's the same as the open source model, everything like that. There's also the here is a big company with loads of money to throw at the problem, 
and uh, the rising tide will lift all boats like who's going to complain about a, a big company such as um meta or google or something like that saying here's um 10 full-time developer employees that are just going to look at this like who's going to complain about those kind of developer resources so uh, that i can see as a positive i could see it being the same issue as google chrome and the the web in general when google chrome became the most popular browser google has assumed basically control over the internet in in some respects not all they basically dictate web standards now because their browser is the biggest and I could see it being the same thing with Meta, potentially. I don't know that that's a bad thing, necessarily. I just wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Also, if there is a group, a lot of people who have issue with uh, with uh, Lemmy being developed by tankies, then there is definitely <laughs> a lot of people who have issue with federating with, uh, with Meta. Basically, what I want to say, yeah, no, that, that's that's already proven, and we have nothing but rumors, but this is already proven to be a massively unpopular thing. There was kind of a mini firestorm on my uh, on my Mastodon feed about this, and opinions were a little bit divided. Uh, some people were on the taking the position of, oh, it's the Fediverse, you can just defederate from those instances, no harm done, it's it's your choice. But then there was other people saying, no, they're going to get their greasy fingers all over it and turn it into something worse uh, and we should like be completely like fuck you meta and defederate from whatever they're doing and like just without even listening to them without even hearing their side of the story just like fuck you defederate and i don't know where i don't know I, honestly personally i don't give a shit i don't really care um i use mastodon the way i use it you know i'll, I'll, I'll just continue to use whatever works for me um all these bigger kind of discussions uh, i'll just let the people who who know their stuff hash those things out I have decided that I'm going to defederate from whatever Meta comes up with. Not because I believe they're going to steal my data. They are. If they were going to, they already could have. And they're, that's just a fact of reality. If you post something publicly on the internet, it's public. It's going to be public forever. But I don't want to interact with Facebook users. <laughs> they're not great. <laughs> that's actually what more what it comes down to for me it's I, i've actually like carved out just a nice little feed on mastodon and i follow people like main it's mainly linux people and stuff like that and and linux adjacent people that i follow and interact with on mastodon but i'm fine with that you know because and they're not 100 percent like people i know through the podcast and through linux stuff uh you know there are there are a smattering of other people that that are into some really cool stuff that uh, that i follow um like concept artists and stuff like yeah there's some really fun stuff there some political people some journalists uh and some like publications have actually created their own mastodon accounts um like a actual like proper news outlets have created uh, uh their own uh, instances and stuff like that so you know it's a nice mixed bag for now, but it's very curated and it's very nice, and I don't really want it to change that much. <laughs> I mean, little things that have surprised me. I mean, the EU Commission Ireland has um, there on um, Macedon. The inter EU is on the on on, on the Fediverse. They have, I think they are on in that instance. So that about wraps it up for this episode. LinuxLads.com forward slash contact is where you can find all the links. They'll also be in the show notes, which you should totally read because Mike works really hard on those. <laughs> and Amalith, um, you have an announcement. Yes, I'm going to be at DEF CON this year. DEF CON 31 from August 10th through the 13th, I think. So if anyone wants to meet up, shoot us an email. Shoot me an email on secluded.site. I'd be happy to meet people. And I was just going to say that if anyone of our listeners wants to appreciate the amount of emojis that Mike puts in the show notes, you should po reply with a post with exclusively emojis, just to show them <laughs> Mike, appreciation for Mike's emojis in his in his. Don't think I've been putting any emojis there for a few few rounds. Yeah, I say bring back the emojis. Bring back the emojis. <laughs> <laughs> we also have one other event announcement. Ubuntu Summit 2023 was announced. Uh, that's from the 3rd till the 5th of November. Yeah. And uh, we went last year. It was an absolute barrel of laughs. Probably one of the most fun times I've had going to Linux conferences and that uh, over the last few years. Probably just one of the best few days uh, of my quote-unquote career. 
And this time I will be there. Yeah, and this time, uh, hopefully all four of us will be there this time. Um, we're going to do a live recording again. Um, and uh, hopefully it won't sound terrible <laughs> this time. <laughs> Topic to be decided. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take ideas for what we can talk about this time because we already kind of did the making of the podcast last time, so we can't do that again. Uh, we can have a panel discussion about something, who knows. But yeah, Ubuntu Summit 2023, so check that out. Um, uh, a couple of us may also be doing separate talks apart from uh, our, our podcast recording, so uh, check that out. It will be in Riga in Latvia, and I have a Latvian colleague who said, okay, Latvia in November will be quite cold, make sure that you wrap up. What we refer to in, in Ireland, whenever something is very cold, we refer to it as a bit Baltic. Um, <laughs> but this time it actually will be Baltic. <laughs> I never thought of that, actually. So that, that about wraps it up. Um, thanks for listening again. And uh, we'll be back in about two weeks. See you later. Bye. Adios. Bye.